For this eight minute lesson, let's draw this really cool three dimensional box popping open, a little treasure box. I'm gonna practice, we'll start off by you doing some cubes, some boxes. These are a great fundamental shape to start with and practice, build your skill and your confidence. Then we can use this box to launch into all kinds of ideas. I practice my drawings in a spiral bound sketchbook, but you can use just any scrap pieces of paper out of your desk drawer. You can use any pencil you want. Of course, you can get more expensive drawing equipment, but you know, just anything will work, any, any pen or any piece of paper. Well, let's warm up with a couple boxes. I'll start about right here. I'll put a dot right here, and then straight across it, I'm gonna put another dot. Now, this is a wonderful, fun technique to draw a foreshortened box. Put your finger right in the middle. This is the same technique I learned when I was in elementary school. I'm gonna teach you. I taught junior high kids how to draw other boxes like this. I teach college students how to draw boxes like this. I teach adult workshops on how to draw boxes uh, for the um, adults with who always wanted to learn how to draw but never did as kids. And this is the same style I use, the same technique. From right here, I'm going to draw the four short and square. From right here, let's connect the dots. Look at that, see? A nice look, a little dot to dot here. A four short and square. Now go ahead and overshoot your lines. Let's just practice this four short and square. In fact, let's just do a couple of these. Practice. Let's do another one over here on the side. Put two, two dots straight across. Put your finger in the middle. Put a dot above and below. You can draw 10 of these. You can draw 20 of these each day and, and get your skill so you can draw these without even thinking. Let's do another one. Put two dots far apart. Make sure your lines are straight across. Put your finger in the middle. Put a dot above and below your finger. Keep these two really close together, okay? A common mistake students make when they first start when they're drawing these four shortened squares is they'll do this. They'll put the two dots like this and then they'll put their finger, but then they'll put the dots too far apart like this and it opens up like that. You see, this is okay. It's just it's going to be more of a, 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 a skewed picture. It's going to be, it's too open. I want to squish it. I want to make it more foreshortened. So these are really squished four shortened squares. Now let's go ahead and finish this box. Oh, look, we can do three boxes. We'll do three little, little towers here. Okay, so vertical line, vertical line. You can practice these all day long and it's really good for your brain, good for your drawing skill. So you won't have to think, you won't have to hesitate when you're gonna draw the box. It's a good building block for a thousand other drawings. You can take this box, use this line right here, go uphill, follow this guy. This guideline going up here, you know what that is, that's direction north, east. This line going up here in this direction, right? That's direction north, west, right? We're going to use those positions a lot on the drawing compass. Again, if you want to print up a copy of the drawing compass, you can go to my website and go ahead and print up the drawing compass and also those 12 Renaissance words. Now go uphill following the drawing compass, go uphill here. And you can see this near part of the box is larger and it gets smaller. Ah, look at this. Those 12 Renaissance words, there's 12 Renaissance words, right? Those Renaissance words are 500 years old. And the drawing compass helps you to utilize these 12 words to create the visual illusion, okay? These words equal 3D. 3D, three-dimensional illusion, all right? 3D, it, that, that third dimension is depth, okay? Depth, D-E-P-T-H. You have to have that, that third dimension. You have length, okay? You have width or height. Some people call it up and down height. I call it width, and you have length, and you have depth. That's the third dimension. We want to create this wonderful illusion. Go uphill here, and there you go. You got a box, right? Let's put another box. Let's draw this other one back behind here. Look at it. You can draw a vertical line here, a little tower back here. Look at this. I want to move this box further away, so watch what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead, take this line, and I'll, I'll, I'll extend it, that guideline, and that'll be the edge of my, my box over here. Go uphill here, turn the corner, and look at this. This comes to right here to this edge, this corner. I'm going to follow the guideline going in direction northeast. Right here, it's going to go behind the box. And there's just a little bit of overlapping, just a little overlapping edge there. Now, if I had meant to draw this, this was just kind of an afterthought, but if I had meant to, I probably would have moved the box over just a bit more to right here so that these two lines wouldn't be too close together because then it doesn't really separate the objects. Okay, does that make sense? I want to make sure, I would push this back further. This is a little too close to me. I'd, I'd, I'd want to create more of a difference so that your eye could easily see the corner, the, the hallway in between. Let's do the same thing over here. Look at this. Isn't that fun? Now for this box, since it is much closer to this box, 
I'm going to go up here, move up just a bit. See this following the guideline? It's further away. I'm not going to line it up. But this one was far enough away. I lined it up at the bottom. This one is too close here, so I'll move it up just a bit. And look, it disappeared. Isn't that fun? Go ahead. You can take your pencil. We'll put some hatching. This is called hatching right there. I'll put just some hatch lines coming down. Shade opposite the light. In my imagination, I'm pretending the light's coming from up here in the top right, okay? Light's coming from over here in this direction. All the light's coming down, so we'll shade over here. And then also the light's over here, so let's put a shadow. Look at this. We spent five minutes on our warm-up drawing. I still want to draw a treasure chest. Okay, put a shadow over here. Cool. All right, now let's draw that treasure box using this, these, these great foreshortened shapes, all right? So we'll just jump right into it. We'll make it work here. We got a few seconds. So we'll start about right here. I'll put a dot. Come across here horizontally, straight across here. Put your finger in the middle. Put a dot above and below your finger. Make sure these two dots are close together so you're creating that nice foreshortened illusion. And then let's go ahead and connect it. Turn the corner over here. Turn the corner over here. Guideline. Draw a nice foreshortened box. See that? Draw some vertical lines here. Now, I'm trying to line my, my vertical lines up with the side of my TV, but it is a little, a little more tricky here. All right, now, it can be as loose and sketchy as you want. Go ahead and, and zoom out just a bit so we can show the bottom here. Now, I'm going to use this guideline in the direction northeast, going uphill, get smaller, do the same thing over here. Going up here in direction northwest. All right, now there's our box. Very, it's a great practice. You practice that a lot. Now, I'm going to pop this, the lid of the treasure box open. Let's draw these two lines parallel. Parallel means the lines are at the same exact angle. These two lines, these two vertical lines are parallel. See? These two lines are parallel. This line is parallel with the side of your screen. Okay? Go cool. Now, now we're going to draw, not quite parallel, but I'm going to use the guideline, right? Use that line from direction northeast. I'm going to use that compass. And I'm going to draw this line too. Watch this. It's going to be even more slanted because eventually when you get into a more advanced two-point perspective, all these lines would come back to a vanishing point far away down there. We'll get into that like around lesson 100 or something like that. Now let's pop this lid open. Pop this lid open. Look, it's one of these old wooden treasures boxes that they were found on the Spanish galleon exploring vessels, you know, back in the, uh, the days of those big giant sailboats. They're exploring the oceans. Now, you see these lines here. This line, it gets smaller. Here's that word size. It gets smaller and smaller as it moves away. Okay? Draw the thickness here. Now, watch this line inside. Neat little peekaboo line right there. Inside here, you could put some neat treasure, some overlapping lines. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And put another one here. Here's overlapping. Right there's great. Overlapping. Some, I don't know, little pearls in there. Some pearls of wisdom. Let's go ahead and shade nice and dark under, underneath the, the treasure box lid. Okay, now down here, let's shade over here. And then you can take your finger and you can blend it. Darken in those edges. Nice and dark in the in the nooks and crannies. Nice and dark down here on the base. I'm going to go ahead and shade the side of the box. You can use some side lines, some hatching, and then you can blend it. Now, it's not a round object, so I'm going to make sure that the it's not blended. It's a, it's, a, it's a smooth tone. It's not blended from dark to light, okay? This is, it, hopefully that'll be clear to you, make some sense. You blend on round objects and you just smooth and the tone on square objects. I'm just smoothing it out. It's the same value all the way across. And then we'll put a little shadow on the ground here. A little shadow. And we are actually, our eight minute lessons turned into a 10 minute lesson. That's easy to do. I bet when you turn this, this off, <laughs> I bet you keep drawing for another half an hour, an hour. That's cool. It just, it just gets under it's under your skin. You just have to keep practicing. You can't stop, can you? Well, there you go. There is your eight-minute eight lesson turned into a ten-minute lesson. Way to go!